morning, lovely humans. It's actually not morning. I just said that to make you all think that I've been having this really productive day when it hasn't really been. Today's a Saturday and I never really film on Saturdays, but um, for today's video, kind of requires me to film on a Saturday. I just like to keep my Saturdays free because Daryl's home and we normally like to do things together and so anyways I'm gonna set you guys on the tripod real quick so you're not flopping around the whole time I'm trying to talk to you so give me a second today's outfit I feel like a big fat marshmallow in this dress <laughs> it's a maternity dress and it's really really comfortable it's just every time I wear it I feel huge like I feel like I'm wide this way but I'm pregnant, so I guess that's an excuse. <laughs> okay, I like that angle better. My name is Kim Martin, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I put videos out every Tuesday, so if you're not subscribed, you should do that, and then you won't miss a video. So a little while ago, I had made a comment in my video about you guys letting me know what types of videos you're interested in seeing, and so many people wanted more cooking videos, which is great, because I love cooking, but I just didn't realize that so many of my viewers were interested in cooking and cooking videos. I just thought that might be kind of boring, but apparently not. So anyways, so that being said, today's video is a cooking video and I thought it'd be fun to show you guys how I do Sunday dinner. As a whole, I guess I would say in the Mennonite culture, it's kind of a big deal to have a big Sunday lunch. And so growing up, my mom always did Sunday lunch very well. <laughs> when we had company over, she fed them very well. And um, it's something that I enjoy doing. I enjoy having people over for Sunday dinner. So we are having company over on Sunday, and so I'm gonna be making a big meal, and I am really excited to just take you guys along with me. I do need to throw a disclaimer in real quick. A lot of the recipes that I'm gonna be using are not my recipes. Um, and so I don't think I'm gonna be sharing them in the description box. I know the comment section is gonna be full of people wanting these recipes, but I just don't feel right sharing a recipe that's not originally mine. If these were just random recipes that I would find on Pinterest, I would be happy to share them with you, but since they are not mine, I feel like I should maybe <laughs> not share them. So I will share with you what I can, but don't be disappointed. Um, anyways, okay, let's get started. I have a bunch of stuff to do today. Normally when you have company for Sunday lunch, um, a lot of the work ends up being more on Saturday preparing for it than it is actually on Sunday. So I've got my work cut out for me today, and so we better get started because like I said, it's not morning anymore, so <laughs> let's go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna make are the dinner rolls. Um, and the reason I have to make these first is because the recipe says they have to raise for three to four hours. So I better get started. <laughs> My dishwasher it is running right now but anyways we've got the butterhorns mixed up they need to raise for three to four hours so in the meantime I'm gonna get started making the pies for tomorrow and then next after that we'll probably be getting the potatoes ready so something that mom taught me to do when you're making a bunch of food or you're gonna be in the kitchen for like a large portion of the day is to get some soapy water in your sink and just wash your dishes as you go because there is nothing more exhausting than having spent the entire day cooking or baking or just in the kitchen in general and then having this monstrous stack of dishes. And so I like to do that and then I'll just like wash my dishes as I go and then hopefully by the end of the day I have a bunch of food made and all my dishes are washed. So just a tip for you. <laughs> You've watched me make pie a million times, so I'm not going to explain this process. And I'm going to speed up this footage so we can just get through this because you guys know how I make pie. <laughs> It 
If you're interested in my pie crust recipe, I will link it here in the cards for you. start on the cheesy potatoes that I'm gonna make and it is a little bit of a process because I have to like peel off the potatoes and then um, I have to cook them and then shred them and then mix up the sauce and then oh yeah anyway um, this is probably the most time-consuming thing <laughs> um, that I'm gonna be making but they're totally worth the work so yeah I'm gonna get started on that next I don't have the shredder attachment for my KitchenAid. Hopefully someday, but I don't have it right now, so we do it all by hand. In my unprofessional opinion that no one asked for, I seem to think the difference between like good cheesy potatoes and like not so good cheesy potatoes is the shredded cheese. If you use the pre-shredded stuff, it doesn't seem to melt together quite as nicely as go into all the trouble to do it this way. Um, and so that's what I tell myself when my arm feels like it's gonna fall off. It's gonna make these potatoes incredible. So <laughs> anyways, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. None of you signed up for this, so. <laughs>
Okay, we actually have supper plans tonight and I was hoping to have a lot more done by this time than I do. So I feel really bad. I feel like I'm not really explaining myself all that well right now and I apologize for that. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put the potatoes together. I have them all shredded here by hand. Yes, my arm is killing me. Thank you for asking. Um, and so I'm gonna do like a layer of potatoes and then some sauce and then the potatoes and sauce and then cheese on top. And then um, for tomorrow, all I have to do is pop it in the oven and when we get home from church, pop it out of the oven and we're good to go. We just got back from supper and it is about like nine o'clock. I really want to get this stuff done tonight yet so I don't have quite as much to do tomorrow morning. This kitchen has terrible lighting especially in the evenings so I apologize about that. So before I get the chicken out we are going to make um, a butter mixture to put under the skin of the chicken and then um, on the outside of the chicken as well. Um, and so the things I have here, I have some butter and some parsley. Um, I have lemons, I have garlic, salt and pepper. All right, so first things first, I have a couple sticks. I don't know how well you can see, um, but I have a couple sticks of butter. I'm gonna chop up some of the parsley and add some of the lemon juice. I'm also gonna mix some of the garlic and add all of that stuff together and make a mixture. So I will move you guys a little closer so you can see what's going on. So now that we've got our chicken, we have to do something that's a little bit nasty and we have to go in and separate the skin from the chicken. And it, I know, it's pretty gross. And yes, I know this is gross, but then you take some of your butter mixture. <laughs> You're gonna slide that underneath, underneath the skin. You can kind of move it around from outside the skin. The reason you want to get the butter underneath the skin is so that when it bakes, the skin will kind of help hold all of that moisture and flavor and all of that stuff. It'll kind of hold it in. So once you have the butter all in the skin, um, we're going to put some things inside of it and then we're going to put it in our pan and it'll be good to go. So what we're going to put in it um, might surprise you a little bit. We're actually going to take um, another lemon and we're going to slice it in half and we're going to put both halves inside. Trust me, the flavor is amazing. Um, I'm gonna put some onion and some parsley. We have just a little bit of our butter mixture left, so we're gonna rub that on top, and then we're done. onions um, that didn't fit inside and I'm going to put those around the chicken. Then we're going to take the rest of our butter mixture and just spread that on top of the chicken. So there's one more step that is very important. You don't want to skip it and that is um, making sure that it is covered in olive oil. The reason why adding the olive oil is so important is because it's going to prevent the butter um, from burning. So then you're going to just drizzle that on. And then I like to add a little bit more salt and pepper on the top. And then I like to add more parsley. Then we're going to add a little bit of 
water because otherwise um, your chicken can dry out. So add some water. All right, and that's all there is to it tomorrow morning. Um, all right, and that is all there is to it. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and, and then in the morning, all we have to do is turn on our oven and pop it in. Okay, so I'm pretty much done for the evening. I have the chicken all ready to be thrown in the oven in the morning, have the potatoes done. The pies are almost completely finished. I have to whip up the topping stuff for them tomorrow yet. Um, but then just have to make the salad in the morning and I think everything else is done. So I don't know if I'm gonna have time to set the table tonight or not, but we'll see how motivated I am. Otherwise, I'll just do that tomorrow morning as well. So anyways, I guess I will see you guys tomorrow morning bright and early. <laughs> Hey, good morning you guys goodness I cannot get the sleep out of my voice and my eyes but um, <laughs> I'm gonna try and talk quietly because um, Daryl's still sleeping and so I don't want to wake him up I have a few things left to do this morning I'm going to put the chicken in the oven here in a little bit actually first of all I think I'm gonna make breakfast so that when Daryl gets up um, I have it ready all right let's get this morning started Okay, I have the chicken and the potatoes in the oven. I have the green beans in the crock pot. I have all of my serving bowls ready for when we get home so I can dish the hot food into them. And I have the butter horns or dinner rolls, whatever you prefer to call them, uh, ready to be popped in the oven as soon as we get home. I like to pop them in and just warm them up. Um, it makes them taste like they just came out of the oven even though I made them yesterday. I have my salad put together and the pies are sitting in the fridge tempting me. So, <laughs> so it feels like I have my brain completely organized and as soon as we get home from church it shouldn't be too much work to get everything on the table so that feels good. Anyways, we are just about to head out the door for church but I'm actually going to say goodbye to you guys right now because I think as soon as we get home from church and I get the food on the table, um, I'll try and get some footage for you but we're going to have company here and I'm going to be running around like my head's been chopped off. So. I'm not really planning on filming a whole lot once we get home from church, so I'm going to say goodbye now. But I will add the footage that I get um, after this, so stick around for that. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope you found this video entertaining and interesting. But I did want to say really quick that this is not how every Mennonite family does Sunday lunch. There are lots of variations. There are lots of different ways that families like to do things. There are lots of different traditions, and this is just the way I was raised doing it. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick peek into what a Sunday lunch looks like at our house. So, anyways, I'll see you guys on Tuesday next week. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and like this video. And have an amazing day, you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye!